Now, let me refute a, a potential objection, because these heretics will do everything to rob Jesus of his glory and blaspheme his name. Yep, Philo puts me in a pickle. Now, let me tell you how they're going to respond to Philippians 2. Exactly, Candace. Basically, everything said about Jehovah is ascribed to Jesus in the New Testament. Now, you know what they're going to tell you? No, oh, wait, 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 wait. It says God exalted him and gave him that name. Why would Jesus be given the name Jehovah if he's already Jehovah by nature? And they think that's a good objection. Are you ready for me to respond to it? How could he be given the name of Jehovah if he's already Jehovah by nature? Because the context is talking about status and position. When it says God has highly exalted him and given him the name, remember how the word name functions in the Bible. You got to get this point. If you don't get this point, you won't understand anything. Then. The Bible uses the term name to refer to the characteristics, nature, and or authority of a thing. So when you speak of name, sometimes... The word name is being used in reference to the authority of a person, the position of a person, the status of a person, right? Well, it's like to use a very bad analogy, a modern example. If I say stop in the name of the law, in the name of the law, meaning the authority that the law has invested in me to tell you what you do and what you don't do, right? I'm giving you a modern analogy. It's bad, but you get the point, right? Stop in the name of the law. What do I mean? Stop by the authority invested in me by the law to command you to do what I say. So when it says God gave him the name, that's simply the biblical way of saying God gave him the authority and status of Jehovah. So why did God give Jesus the status of Jehovah, the authority of Jehovah? Number one, because he is Jehovah, and that belongs to him by right. But number two, he had humbled himself on earth to take the position and status of a slave. So what it's saying is he exchanged the status of a slave for the status of Jehovah God, a status that belongs to him by right, but which he voluntarily set aside to become a slave on earth. You understand the point? Here, let me prove it to you. Philippians 2, 6 to 9. Philippians 2, 6 to 9. If you understand biblical language, the anti-Trinitarians do not have a single argument against the Trinity. All their arguments can be demolished easily by the sword of the Spirit, the Word of God, the Bible, which is Trinitarian. Here, let me prove it to you. Philippians 2, 6 to 9. Who, although, this is referring to Jesus, who, although he was existing in God's form, gave no consideration to a seizure, namely that he should be equal to God. No, but he emptied himself, how? And took a slave's form. He emptied himself of that equality, that position of equality, by taking the position of a slave, a slave's form, and became human. More than that, when he came as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death. Yes, death on a torture state. Talk about butchering the Greek. But anyway, for this reason, very reason, because Jesus humbled himself and set aside his position of equality to take the status and position of a slave on earth when he became man. For this reason, God then responds to what Jesus did by exalting him and giving him the name, meaning the status that belongs to Jehovah, because that is his status by right, but which he set aside voluntarily. Making sense? You see, if you understand the Trinity, and you understand the biblical basis for the Trinity, you understand the Trinity is irrefutable? Biblically, it's irrefutable. Because the Trinity is a fact of biblical revelation. And the God who exists is triune, Father, Son, and Spirit. But that's if you understand what the Trinity teaches, what the Bible teaches about Jesus having two natures, God and man, 
and understand how to interpret biblical language. Clear? Everyone with me so far? I just want to let it sink in before I move on. Is there anyone confused? So if someone tells you, why would God give Jesus the name Jehovah if he's already Jehovah by nature? Because read the context. He humbled himself to take the position and status of a slave on earth when he became human. So he set aside his status, his glory, his honor, his position as Jehovah to take the status of a slave. So then God then exalts him to the status of Jehovah, a status that's his by right, but which he voluntarily set aside. And then that explains why, folks, in Philippians 2, 10 to 11, the worship that Jehovah says every human must give to him, is Isaiah 45, 23, is the very worship what Paul says every creature in creation will give to Jesus. Paul, how can you say the worship that every human creature must give to Jehovah? And Isaiah 45, 23, will be given to Jesus, not just by human creatures, every creature in all creation. Because he said every knee will bend in heaven, on earth, beneath the ground. That's all creation, Paul. How can every created thing give to Jesus the worship that Isaiah says belongs to Jehovah alone? And how can every creature worship Jesus if Jesus is a creature? Wouldn't he be part of creation, worshiping the Father? Why is he distinguished from every creature? And the answer is simple, because he's not a creature. He's Jehovah God who became flesh.